I don't market myself as a fertility functional medicine practitioner, but I've had dozens of women that have been able to have babies by simply going on a carnivore-ish diet and detoxing their bodies of mycotoxins. So when you look at this chart here, for people that are on audio, I'm sorry, you're missing out on a lot of visuals, so may refer to this, this video, but when you look at the different mycotoxins, not only are they carcinogenic, but they also affect the immune system. All of them are considered immunotoxic. Some of them are specifically toxic to the kidneys, like ochratoxin. Many of them are neurotoxins as well, which is probably why we're seeing the reduced IQ in children exposed to moldy buildings. But then also, you have issues with fertility in women and also this teratogenic effect, meaning that it's going to affect a fetus. And so there are millions of children being born with mycotoxins in their bodies because of their mother having their own mold exposure during their lifetime or these children being born into moldy environments. And so women that are told they can't have children, they need to investigate mycotoxins. This is very important. You can do a simple urine test at home. It's a fasted urine sample. And if you find elevated levels of mycotoxins, you have to realize, like we talked about with Zierolinone, this is going to affect your estrogen levels. And so if you have PMS, if you have irritability, if you have anxiety, if you have low self-esteem, if you're a chronic worrier, that is directly correlated to Issues with not only serotonin, which you can measure on urine, but also your mycotoxin load. And so these women that come to me that are 40, 42, they feel like this biological clock is ticking. They want to have children. The first thing I do is run urine on them and look at mycotoxins. The funny thing is half the time these women get pregnant in the middle of a protocol. I tell them like, look, hold on. Let's detox you first before you get pregnant, before you start trying. Give me a few months. Let me work on you. And then they get pregnant in the middle of the protocol, which is exciting. And... In many cases, we can continue gentle, safe binders throughout pregnancy to ensure there was actually a study done. I could pull it up if you want, but it was on uh, chlorella, and chlorella has been shown to reduce the transfer of toxins to the fetus. So the cool thing is if a woman is currently pregnant listening to this and she wants to improve the health of her child and reduce the risk of cancers and other issues in her child, she can take binders during pregnancy to reduce that transfer to the baby and that also was shown to reduce the transfer via breast milk. So if you can bind up these toxins, you still want to breastfeed your baby. You don't want them drinking friggin' corn syrup garbage formula. You want breast milk. You can make that breast milk healthier. So cool. I'm thinking of Heidi Montag, who came on the podcast a few weeks ago. Heidi's trying to get pregnant. She has um, one son named Gunnar. Heidi is from the Hills a show that I didn't watch, but she and Spencer are really, really cool people. Spencer Pratt uh, in the Hollywood area. And I'm going to send Heidi this podcast for sure, because she's trying to get pregnant. I think she's improving her fertility by doing an animal-based diet. She's cutting out all of these high mold foods, but we should probably uh, definitely get her tested with a urine test to see if she's exposed anywhere else. Um, you know few, how old she is? Uh, she's probably in her mid thirties. Okay. So she's got plenty of time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely testosterone, crazy to think about the combination of xenoestrogens, uh, phytoestrogens. So xenoestrogens are things like plastics, BPA, other bisphenols, bisphenol E, bisphenol C, S, whatever, uh, plant, plant estrogens, phytoestrogens, things like soy. And then also this combination of mold toxins, xerolinone from fumonisin mold, right? Fumonisin. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 yeah. Fumonisins, yeah. Fusarium is the mold, yeah. and it can make different mycotoxins. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And the if you look at this, I've talked about this study um, a couple of times in Loma Linda. This is a community of Seventh Day Adventists, and this uh, population has a higher rate of veganism and vegetarianism due to their religious preferences. I've done a long ago previous podcast with. Uh, a gentleman talking about the historical background of Seventh-day Adventist movement and the fact that cornflakes are essentially created by Harvey Kellogg to chemically castrate people and quell uh, carnal libidinous desires. So cornflakes do a fantastic job of that, probably because they are so nutrient poor and because they are bathe, they're going to bathe you and everything about you in mold toxins. So cornflakes is the perfect antidote to your libido. Uh, if you actually want to be a healthy human and you would like a libido and you want to have uh, healthy, uh, responsible sexual relations with other healthy, responsible, uh, aware humans, then you probably want to avoid things like cornflakes or other grains. But the, uh, the population in Loma Linda, uh, has very, very poor sperm quality, 
probably because of this combination of both plant pesticides, uh, exogenous synthetic pesticides going on plants and mold toxins in the foods they are eating. You've got something pulled up here. Yeah. And like I said in the beginning, this is why I love doing podcasts with you because everybody else would be so bored by now with these studies, but you love this stuff. And so when people say things like mycotoxins affect fertility, that's a pretty bold statement. And we're talking about testosterone, but there's there's papers on this. This is a, a paper all about the effects of mycotoxins on the actual endocrine system. And it just breaks this down. Ochratoxin, it shows, which this gets a little geeky even over my head, phosphorylation of P13K. I don't know what they're talking about there, but all I do know is that when you're looking at xerolinone, it's talking about here spermatogenesis. You talk about male fertility being affected. It talks about the Sertoli cells. Yeah, here they are. Xerolinone is an estrogenic mycotoxin, damages the Sertoli cells, and may induce apoptosis. And so the Sertoli cells, that is what forms the testes and creates spermatogenesis. So that's crazy. So just I, I just wanted to just go a little deeper because when you say mycotoxins affect fertility, it's like, well, how? And I think it's it, it's a multi combination answer, right? It's affecting the hormones, but then it's also affecting your testicles that are making your sperm. Yeah, that's where the that's where the testosterone and the sperm is made in the late egg and the Sertoli cells in the testicle, and it can be directly toxic to that. And I'm sure it will affect oogenesis and the cells making eggs too, which will affect progesterone and estrogen and all that stuff for women as well. 